How bad are new craps from China? Apparently pretty bad. I'm redoing a job of one of my own pieces of equipment that I just did February of this year. It's now November the 11th. I did this same job February 1st and it's broken down again. Let's see if it's something else or whether it's the same parts that I just put in. Let's check it out. Well, today I'm going to work on my ICOM IC2800 again. I've replaced this with a new radio, but this is the one that uh, I've been using for the past 20 odd years, and the display has gone bad again. I'll show you what it shows when I, when I turn it on. It just shows a blank screen and nothing on there. If you look at it closely, you might be able to read the latent frequency that was on there before. If we kill some lights in here, you might be able to see something. That's a that's an etched in screen. Like it's 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 a damaged screen. If I change the frequency, for example, see it doesn't change. It stays the same. Same with the other one. That's just where it was parked. When you first turn this on, it should say ICOM, and it doesn't. It just shows what was. I like to call it burning, but it's not burning because uh, LCD screens don't burn. There's nothing to burn. What happens though is the pixels get stuck. If they stay on the same, they tend to stay in whatever state they were left in. And they will eventually clear if you display alternating pictures, right? So black or white, black or white, or display video on it, they'll eventually clear up but I've seen LCD TVs that were running in 4x3 mode for years and when we put a 16x9 signal on the, the bars were dark it took a while for them to return if they ever did anyway this one here as you can see the screen is not showing anything just like the last time it broke down so we're gonna take this apart and see if we can get it to work once again this of course is a two-piece unit this is the radio the transceiver is here this would connect to the antenna and a microphone plugs into here and of course this is just the the front end so we're going to kill the power I'm going to open this the uh, control unit up because this is where the fault is going to be I've repaired this once I changed out several capacitors and I didn't change them all because I didn't have all the values but I did change a number of them and it worked but what happened was I used to leave this radio turned on all the time never turn it off as most of my ham radios are. They're always on so that if someone calls me, I can hear it. And uh, it got shut off when I was on holidays. I shut the power supply off when I was gone for a week. When I came back and turned it on, the display had failed again, which is the usual failure mode for these type of radios. This will be the third time that this has happened. First time it happened, it was still under warranty. And ICOM just replaced the entire unit, the whole, the whole head unit. Uh, and then I then the second time it failed is when I fixed it the last time and now it's gone again So let's just see what other caps or whether the same ones have gone bad again These run real hot these units. They, they, they the display itself gets ridiculously hot just from the the Fluorescent lamp that lights up the display and the inverter circuit and so forth So it wouldn't surprise me if more caps or even the ones I put in have dried up again so to get access, we remove the screws from the back. I've since replaced this radio. So it's not going to be one that I'm really going to be using. I just like it to work. I replaced it with that nice new uh, Fusion, Yesu Fusion receiver. So here's the caps that I changed last time on it. I didn't change some of these other ones in here because I didn't have enough of them. But I'm going to change out. I'll check them. Check them out. I think the ones that I put in probably are okay. But um, some of these other ones here may be the culprit. So we'll start with. Uh, well, I'll check these ones first. We'll check the ESR. I'm just keeping an eye on the time because uh, in about three minutes I'm going to be uh, taking a moment of silence to uh, give my respect for those that fought in. All the wars and lost their lives. I have had uncles that went to the war and well they returned but they were never the same. 
and they're, of course they're all gone now, but I uh, have to pay my respect to all the men and women of the armed forces that many of them paid the ultimate price to uh, defend our freedom. What am I doing here? Grabbing the wrong meter. Looking for the ESR meter. Okay. Let's check some of these other little buggers out down here. Like this one here. This one is open. That one's bad. That was the one I changed. How is it looking? Uh, see, even that one, you know, that that was changed not that long ago. It's gone bad. How's this one looking? You know? That one's gone bad, too. That's another one that I changed. I bet you the ones I put in are all bad. I have to change these out again. They didn't last very long, did they? Look at that. Open. There's another one. Holy crap. All these ones I put in are no good. Cheap Chinese caps. Uh, 35? Yeah, I gotta change these ones. I bet you I bet you if I just change this the same four that I changed before and add this one here to it, I bet you it will work. These ones, how are these ones over here? Are these other ones any good? They weren't bad the last time, that's why I didn't change them, because they were they were measuring okay. Yeah, see those ones are probably okay. Uh, some of them could be, you know, they're heading up there for sure, but they aren't open. So we'll start by just changing out these ones here. Uh, I'm going to be uh, taking a moment of silence now. It's uh, 1 minute to 11, so um, just bear with me while I do absolutely nothing for 1 minute. Okay, uh, I can, I guess, get back to work now. So I'm going to swap out these ones again, and we'll try it and see if the display lights up, and I bet you that'll fix it. Unfortunately, I'm going to have the same crappy caps that I put in here before, but that should be fine because, again, this radio is not going to be left turned on 24-7 anymore. It's basically going to be put away, and I don't know when I'll use it again, but I want it to work. Oh, look. One of my LEDs has failed over my bench. They didn't last very long, did they? So I'll start by removing... I'll start at the top here and work my way backwards. So we'll remove this one first. This one was a, uh, what is this thing? 33, I think. 33 at 10 volts. Should have some of those in here. Ten microfarad,
flex on there, I'll just put some fresh solder down. I know it would be easier to put in surface mounted caps, but I don't have any. And I don't feel like going and getting some. Besides the fact that it's a holiday today and I can't go and get it even though I want to. Another 47 or 25 here. Okay, so that's the that's the five caps that I think I'll try it with, to start with. We'll see if the display comes back. So we'll just plug it in. And uh, we'll know pretty quick whether it's gonna work. As I apply power, I should um, get the display. And it's got a display. It's not a great display. It's dim. It'll brighten up though when the uh, when the um, backlight warms up a bit, but I can actually read the display now. It's working. I think there's still another cap or two that's bad because I'm getting lines in the picture. So we'll just check a few more. But at least I can read the display on it now, whereas I couldn't before at all. So here's how it looks now. I've turned out some of the studio lights. That's about as bright as I ever remember this thing being. It'll probably brighten up if it runs for a few minutes. Just because the fluorescent backlight itself is probably getting a bit weak. But uh, it certainly will show the frequency that the radio is tuned to now. No problem. Looks like my encoder switch also could use a cleaning, doesn't it? Yeah, this encoder switch could be cleaned. Maybe I'll 
give that a shot to I have some cleaner while, while I'm at it it's just a like a rotary encoder switch down here so give that a shot of cleaner while I'm at it that's a bit better now it works okay so I think that's probably I'm gonna I'm happy with that that display is very readable and um, I don't want to do any more than I have to on this one I because I, I the other caps probably could be changed too but I don't want to have to do any more work on this and I absolutely have to again I'm not going to really be putting this radio back into service it's just going to go and sit in a box but at least now it works it's, it's going to have the same problem happen again you know this is like the third time because the first time as I say it was it was replaced under warranty so I didn't work on it but the second time changed all the caps that were bad it's the same caps went bad again the same caps will go bad again in another few years if it's left running 24 hours a day I guess ideally these are turned on and run for a couple of hours and then turned off but it's just a heat is a problem on these they get very hot they dry out the caps and when the caps dry out the display stops working so it's working now as you can see it might not look as great at the angle that it is but it is nice and bright I can read that you can see that it is I'm getting a little bit of flicker in here a bit but it always did do that anyway. So anyway, ICOM IC2800, if you've got one of these troublesome radios, those are the caps that need to be changed in it, definitely. I've tested all the rest. Like, I tested all the rest of them. And the ESR is creeping up. It's like, you know, 2.3 and 3.1, whereas normally it would be less than an ohm. But they aren't open. The ones that were bad were these ones here, and they've all been swapped out. So I'm going to close this one off now I think this one's good for a little while again now to just reconnect the speaker and the back cover there should be enough clearance here for these these new caps I think I've got them soldered down close enough to the board that the cover should fit on it no problem okay I got it all back together as I say the display is functional again I'm happy Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.